Hello there, my name is Guten Chat. I stream Marvel Snap a lot on Twitch. You can find me on YouTube too. And today I want to talk about how to play this game free to play. I have pl been playing this game since May. Uh, exclusively free to play. I never paid for Season Pass. I never bought a bundle. And I've still managed to get very high rank. Uh, winning Infinity Conquests. And... I want to show you what I did to still get a really good collection of cards, even though I'm free to play. So, the first thing to know about the game is that Marvel Snap is indeed free to play friendly. What I mean by that is that even if you don't uh, spend any money, you can still collect a very nice amount of cards, build reasonable decks, and win a lot. Even though you don't have a full collection, even though you're behind uh, other paying uh, players. As you can see from my rank, I managed to get to the top 500 global. Um, basically, um, with a free-to-play account. Um, okay, so the main thing to look at when you are playing this game and especially when you are a free-to-play player, is the collection level. The collection level is basically this number here. As you can see, my number is 3754, which is kind of low um, compared to other players in this uh, rank in the ladder. Um, but that is because I am free-to-play. Basically, the collection level is how much, um, how many cards did you upgrade? That's basically what the collection level represents. And the higher collection level you are, um, the bigger collection of cards you have. Um, we're going to try and talk about what important levels are in the collection level. Um, level 500 is very important in the collection level. Level 485 is also very important. We're going to talk about it really soon. But for now, let's just say that collection level is your main meter of where you are in the progress in the game. So let's just say that. Yo, devilish play, what's up? Okay. So before we jump into specifics and being serious about collection levels um, the main thing I want to say is when you are low collection level when you're like I don't know 200 collection level 500 collection level 1000 collection level enjoy it for me specifically the best times in the game were in low collection level when I was playing uh, Kzar decks, when I was playing Spectrum, when I was playing uh, a lot of Onslaught. Um, those were the most fun days because those are the days that you acquire cards very fast, you learn the game, you're still learning the basics of the game, which is fun, and the game is still not broken. What I mean by that is, if you look at the scale of how the cards work in this game, you start with a very simple concept, of value, quote unquote value of cards, which means I play a card for a price of energy, let's say three or four energy, and what do I get in return is power. So let's say Kzar for example, it's a four four but it buffs all of my one cost cards, so it's a very high value card. So as long as you're in low collection level, there's high probability that you're gonna still play the value game and not the, what I call, ability game. Um, and the value game is fun. You just need to build a deck. I really, really suggest you build your own decks. Your own decks. Don't net deck. Because it will help you learn the game by building your own decks. Um, you, play, you still play the value game. How much do I pay in energy to get power on the board, on the locations? And that's a very fun concept to Start learning the game form. Um, at some point you will see when you will reach higher collection level that the game shifts from 
what I call a value game, or what others also call a value game, to an ability-based game, which means uh, some cards are just so strong with their ability, then the value is not the main win condition anymore. And a good example for that is our, our friend Galactus that just was nerfed. Galactus' ability basically changes the whole game and makes it from a value game to an ability game. And a lot of, a lot of cards do that once you pass a specific threshold. Um, okay. So I really, really suggest enjoy the low collection level time because it's fun and it's easy to learn the value concept of it. Okay, so let's talk about the series and pools in this game. Um, yeah, so we basically have, we're going to talk about the first three pools and then we're going to talk about the other stuff. Basically, we have um, in collection levels 18 to 214, we have pool one, which are basically um, your basic, 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 basic cards. If you look at the collection, uh, and I'll put it on recent. Yeah, so it's very, very basic cards like Hawkeye. Wait, I'll, I'll move this for a second. Just a sec. Yeah, so it's basically very basic cards like Hawkeye, Punisher, The Thing, uh, Hulk, Iron Man. A lot of cards that you get at the start of the game, um, which allows you to understand basic abilities, what cards do, what, how cards work. Kazar, of course, Kazar. Um, the basic Cyclops, Spectrum, and stuff like that. Um... In pool 2, you're still getting uh, more value cards. Uh, if you look at pool 2 a bit. So, there are a bit more interesting cards in pool 2. You start getting stuff like um, Jubilee. That's a bit more interesting than just a value card. Um, you get Leech, which has a very interesting ability, and things start to look a bit different while you're entering Pool 2, because Pool 2 is adding abilities on top of the value, let's say it this way. Um, and Pool 3, which is basically what a lot of, pe a lot of people call Series 3, uh, which is you start entering Pool 3 from Collection Level 486, is the biggest serious in the game um it has 99 cards currently maybe it will change in the future but right now it has 99 cards um and uh these cards are very very good very very strong some of them are a base for a whole archetype of deck um and some of them are like what completes your deck sometimes you have a 12 card deck but you're missing one card and those cards are the cards that will complete your deck okay so um what we want to do about series three and this is very and this is what i did in my um in my journey of playing what i did is i made sure that i got to infinity rank before I entered pool 3, before I entered series 3, before I got to collection level 485, 486. And why did I do that? I did that because once you enter that pool, which is 99 cards, it's a huge pool. What ends up happening is you're in an ongoing chase to get cards while you are playing against other players who might have those cards that you're missing. or might have complete decks or close to complete decks while you are not which is obviously hard right it's like a challenge run it's like an uphill battle so what i did and it turned out really well is i made sure i hit the highest strength that i could 
before I entered Series 3. And only after that I spent... I, I basically hold it up on credits. I had a ton of credits. I had like, I think, around 9,000 or 10... I don't remember exactly. Around 10,000 credits. If I remember correctly. Uh, it, it has been a long time. Um... I climbed up the ladder, I finished up my journey to climb up to infinity, and only after that, I spent my credits and started going into pool 3 and pulling cards from pool 3, from series 3. And I think that is the best way to do it, because otherwise, if you just spend your credits when you get them, what ends up happening, while you're climbing the ladder and trying to get higher ranks, you will end up uh, in a very, very tough struggle against stronger decks. And when you're playing against a stronger deck, it's harder to learn the game because you're not learning anything from, from playing against stronger cards. You know what I mean? Like, if someone has a more complete deck than you, and they win against you because they have the card that you don't, you don't really learn anything about the game from it. You just lose. So it's just an unfun experience. Um, it's better to hold off a bit with your collection level, make sure you are at the right rank, and then enter the new pool, and then open new boxes, etc., etc. Um, efficiently upgrading cards to get more collection level is basically very simple. Uh, you go to your collection, and... What, what basically you want to do is upgrade your gray cards first. So these are the cards um, that have a gray border. And the issue is that cards that are gray cost only 25 credits to upgrade and give you one collection level. 25 credits plus one collection level. Now if you compare it to any other quality of card, Let's say, I don't know, White Tiger here. You will see that we're paying 100 credits for two collection levels. So it's very inefficient. So if you want to be very, very efficient with your credits, the first thing you want to do is upgrade all of your gray cards to make sure you're using your credits well. Okay. Um, basically, the resources you have in this game are made of credits that allow you to upgrade cards together with what's called boosters. You need a specific booster for every card so you can upgrade them. If you don't have the boosters, you can pay gold. We'll talk about gold a bit later. Um, you can pay in gold to upgrade them, but you have to have the boosters in general. Let's say you have zero gold, you need the boosters to upgrade the cards. Um, so, we have credits to upgrade cards, we have gold. Gold is like an, uh, an extra resource, let's say. With gold you can, for example, refresh or refill missions to get more credits. With gold you can buy specific bundles in the shop. Not all bundles, some bundles. You can get uh, variants. You can get cool variants of cards, but if you are free to play, I recommend you not spending gold on any variant at all, because we can't afford cosmetics when we need to get the base cards. So that's about that. Um, gold is basically an extra resource. And another resource that we have is tokens. This token shop and specifically access to tokens only opens at collection level 500 so until then just don't think about it don't even care about tokens basically tokens are a way to acquire specific cards that you really want because the acquisition system is very very random very very random almost entirely random meaning um when you open a, a box when you open a collector's reserve, there's a chance to get a card, 
And even that card is a random card from the specific pool that you are in right now. Your, maybe your collection level is below 485 like we talked earlier. So you will get a random card from pool 2. Random card. So the system is very random for uh, card acquisition, at least until uh, collection level 500. So if you want a specific card after entering pool 3 and after passing collection level 500, you can use tokens. The issue with tokens is it's very hard to get tokens. Uh, you can randomly get 100 tokens from a collector's reserve. You can randomly get 1000 tokens from a spotlight cache. These are also boxes that will appear only after collection level 500. Um, it's very hard to get tokens. And so one good recommendation that I've seen someone give, and I think I will support the same recommendation about tokens in general. If you have um, the ability to open spotlight caches or uh, unlock cards with tokens, use tokens for the 3000 uh, series 4 cards and use spotlight caches for the series 5 cards because otherwise you will spend a very big amount like 6000 tokens for one card for a series 5 card that took you forever to collect and that card might be nerfed next week and then you're just left out of resources for that specific goal. Okay, so back to back to where we were. What we said is this. Up to collection level 485 and collection level 500, the game is pretty simple. You get random cards from pool 1 and pool 2 according to the collection level you are in. Um I'm only talking about card acquisition right now. I'm not talking about cosmetics, variants, and stuff like that. Avatars, titles, I'm not talking about that. I'm only talking about card acquisition. Um, once you pass collection level 500, the token shop that we just saw opens. And in the token shop, you can get a variant. You can get the weekly spotlight, meaning the newest card released that week. You can get a random card from series 4 or 5 and the ability to uh, pin that card, meaning that card stays there until you can afford it. For example, I have pinned Iron Lad, which is 6,000 tokens, which I told you not to do. Don't buy a card with 6,000 tokens. Um, and I'm saving my tokens to get it. Okay, I have only 4,000 and it costs 6,000. Another thing you can get from the token shop is a mystery series 3 card for a thousand tokens. I do not recommend using this. I do not recommend using this. Thank you for the follow. Um, the reason that I don't recommend using this is because you're spending a lot of resources. 1000 tokens is a lot. And you only get a card from series 3, cards that you get for free just for playing the game. So I wouldn't recommend using this at all at all another thing that opens up once you enter uh, those collection levels that we talked about earlier is the ability to choose a card when you choose a card you get you basically will be shown a random card from series 3 um, that will change every I don't remember how many hours and the game gives you the ability to claim one card per season, which is roughly one card per month, roughly. So this means that you can get a card that you were actually specifically looking for in Series 3, but it will take some time until the right card shows here, because it's always random. You can't pick one of the 99 cards, you have to wait and see if the card that you want actually appears in the choose your card. Uh, division. Um, okay. Okay. And now let's talk about the main change that has been entered. I think 
one month ago, one and a half months ago, which is the uh, spotlight caches. Basically, spotlight caches are a very unique change to the card acquisition system. And spotlight caches allow you to get um, series 4 or series 5 cards. Um, and specifically and more interestingly, uh, when there's a new card released, there's a chance you can get the new card. And sometimes a new card is very powerful and you want to get it. Um, hi, how can you be 100% free to play if you have Loki? I have Loki because I won a giveaway in a season pass. I didn't pay for the season pass. I got it in a giveaway. Anyway, back to our, back to our video. Um, a spotlight cache allows you to get um, series 4 or series 5 cards, but it also can give you a random card that you don't necessarily want. Unlike stuff, unlike other stuff, you can plan ahead. Unlike the, unlike the collector reserve, you can plan ahead of spotlight caches. And um, let's say hold or keep your spotlight caches and not opening them before there is a specific spotlight cache that you want. A specific spotlight cache that has the cards that you are looking for. Um, and you can just skip spotlight cache weeks. It changes every week. You can just skip in weeks that you don't want the cards or you already have the cards and stuff like that. Um, spotlight caches can help you a lot when you're trying to keep up with the meta. The meta changes a lot. The meta changes rapidly. And a new card that released, that's released, um, can shuffle the meta completely. A, a great example for that is um, Mobius, that has changed the meta completely. Where are you, Mobius? Yeah, Mobius has changed the meta completely since um, he shuts down a very strong effect of Loki. It was released at the start of the season. Um, so basically, having access to new released cards is very, very good. Um, but also, that spotlight cache is random. You've got basically a chance to get one of three Series 4 slash Series 5 cards and 25% to get a random Series 4 Series 5 card. Just something random. So you can get, let's say, let's say your Spotlight Cache has three cards that you want. Let's say it has, I don't know, Null, and it has Thanos, and it has, it's just an example, and it has, I don't know, Mobius, okay? You can still open a Spotlight Cache and get the fourth option. Okay, um, let's talk about how many credits you can get per week. Okay, so this is a spreadsheet, a screenshot from a spreadsheet that I made um, after the Spotlight Cash uh, idea was released. I made my own calculation. This is my own rough calculation of how many credits you can get from all sources within a week. All sources meaning daily missions, weekly challenge, weekend missions, conquest uh, medal shop. Uh, the season cash, uh, daily free credits, the 50 credits that you can get per day. And I even included uh, gold refresh of missions, but it's only my inclusion because that's how I used to play. I used to refresh missions with gold. Now I don't do it anymore because I'm keeping it for tokens. Um, so what you can see from this calculation that I did, that's basically every week you can get a spotlight cash and a bit right because you see the total credits from all sources are around 6k it's a rough calculation it's not exact and and the collection level required is 120 
you roughly need 45 credits per collection level so that means 5.4k these are these are rough calculations average calculations not exact so take it as a rough calculation this means that every week you can get one spotlight cash and a bit and a bit so this basically means as a free to play player there's a high chance very high chance that you will get to a spotlight cache that has very good cards you will open a box you will not get what you want and then the next week you will have to hold just to get that one card that you really 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 need of course you can be very lucky with what you pull from the spotlight caches but overall since the resources as a free to play are very limited very very limited um that's basically all you can have um obviously if you are not a free to play if you, you if you get the season pass if you get bundles obviously the amount of resources is much bigger much much bigger um I think that sums it up for free to play free to pay players. Um, if you have any questions about everything I said, about everything I explained, let me know. And um, I think that's it.